Welcome to our brief feature tour of NetSport Manager multi-platform PC remote control. NetSport Manager supports remote control from Windows, Mac, Android and iOS devices to any Windows, Mac or Linux computer across the enterprise. This tour will provide an overview of the main Windows control platform and all of the main functionality included within NetSport Manager. So here we have the main control interface and you'll see it's broken down into a number of key areas. Along the top, we have our main toolbar with access to all of the main features within NetSport Manager. Directly below, we have our recent history bar. Down the left-hand side, we have all of our tree and hierarchical views, as well as one-click access to key supporting features, such as our help request, vPro management, and so on. And on the right-hand side, we have our icon view of all computers that have been discovered or grouped within the company hierarchy. We're going to take a few moments just to work our way through some of the key navigation areas and then use an example to highlight some of the high level features available within Net Support. So let's have a look at the main hierarchical view and see how we can group, analyze, and most importantly of all, locate computers across our enterprise. So let's take a look at the main features within the product, starting with our ability to browse, discover, and group our computers once they've been identified within our enterprise. As you can see at the top here, we currently are on our all computers marker, and we have 58 computers that have been discovered and are currently known on our system. Each of those computers is represented by an icon on the right hand side. Now within NetSport, we can create our own groups using the group menu at the top, that allows us to create our own subfolders, in this case demo kit, regional PCs, and below that you can see I've created my own groups where I'm locating machines based on their location. We also include within NetSport Manager an auto group feature. That basically means that whenever we browse, discover and connect to any specific PC or device, we'll automatically identify the operating system and group the computer accordingly, as we can see in the view here, Windows 8, Windows 7 and so on. Again, the same for Linux or Apple Mac computers. The same for client versions that allows us to identify if we have any older versions of NetSport Manager on the network. The new enclosure type that allows us to identify which machines are desktops, towers, all-in-ones and so on. A really useful feature moving forward when we're managing tablets and virtualized PCs and, and more. And again, our also another new feature within NetSport Manager, our client location feature. In version 12 and on, NetSport Manager is able to resolve the approximate location of each remote PC using its public address information. And this allows us to identify the town, city, uh, state and country of each computer. And it allows us to display firstly a high level flag for each PC and below that actual details and grouping based on cities around the world. A really handy feature if you're managing um, a number of computers in different regional offices. Now this is all well and good and we have all these PCs identified on the system, but first and foremost we need a way of actually locating and discovering computers initially. So the browse feature allows us to browse, as the name suggests, and search for computers across our network. Now by default, the browse feature will allow us to discover computers on the same subnet as ourselves. When we come on later in the product to look at the configuration options, we can add ranges of subnets to allow us to browse across the full enterprise. Um, and we also have additional functionality via our gateway for connecting and discovering computers on remote locations. Our active tab simply allows us to identify quickly all those computers we're currently connected to, something we'll see shortly. Help requests allows us to identify any computers that are requesting assistance from across the enterprise. VPro management is exactly as it suggests, the ability to remotely manage our VPro enabled devices. Internet gateways are our capability to create a unique NetSport gateway in different locations that allows us to browse and discover computers in remote locations over HTTP. Now NetSport Manager first and foremost is a WAN based solution allowing you to discover computers over TCP IP or IPX or NetBIOS for legacy implementations. But there are of course occasions where remote sites, the only means of connectivity is over the internet. And therefore our unique gateway component that's available as standard in the product 
allows us to access computers via HTTP that can be in remote and, most importantly, secure locations around the Internet. Finally, we also have an automation mode that allows us to create automated scripts and tasks to perform routine um, actions on a frequent time schedule basis. Now let's jump back to the top of the tree and as you see we've got our all computers view and the best way sometimes to highlight functionality in the product is to actually go through the process. Now I know these machines are all here and I want to connect to some computers and do something. You'll see as I'm tool tipping over each PC it's providing me with some additional information. The name of the computer, the current logged on user, the IP address in this case, the last time I connected to it, the operating system, the location, and the form factor, the case type of the um, particular PC. It's a desktop computer. And I can do this for each of the computers that I want to connect to. Now, if I want to connect to an existing PC, I can first and foremost simply select the computer, like so, and I can choose the connect menu at the top to perform a simple connect. I could also right click and connect on the PC, or if it's a computer that I've used recently, I can select it from my recent list, and you'll see very conveniently my recent list gives me quick access to most of the first level functionality I'm likely to use on a daily basis. So again, I have my summary of the PC, but now I have a connect button, a quick view button, file transfer button, registry editor, inventory creator, a remote command prompt, chat, and message. All the key functions that we'd want to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's just identify that machine and click connect. And as you'll see, the computer is now connected and then we know it's connected because we now have a green highlight within the screen to identify it. You'll also notice that to match this on our active section, we now have one computer that is currently active. So now we have one PC connected. Although we could jump and perform remote control on that straight away, let's pick a few more. In this case, let's select block of computers here and let's right click and connect on all of them as well and as you'll see instantly we now have a selection of computers that we're now able to remote control. Okay so now we have a few PCs selected and connected to let's jump to our active tab and as you can see we've got now a nice real-time thumbnail for each PC. Now we also have the luxury when we look at a PC to mouse over and see a detailed high resolution version of each PC or we can come to our display menu here on the right hand side and you'll see within this we can actually control the size of the thumbnails that are being displayed on the screen. You'll also notice looking at the badges at the bottom of the screen in this zone here that we can also control what is displayed alongside our recent history. In this case operating system but we could also show case type and location and we also have the ability to overlay that with our wireless and battery information for mobile, tablets, laptops, and so on. One you can see being overlaid just here. So let's make our thumbnails a little bit larger. So here's our computers that we're managing over the network. And obviously one of the key strengths of NetSupport Manager is its one-to-many capabilities, the ability to group and manage multiple systems in real time. You'll also notice below each thumbnail, we also have quick access to our main features, our remote control, our file transfer, registry, inventory, command prompt, and chat features as well. So at all times, no matter where you are in the product, there are a number of different ways you can quickly access the key features that you actually want to utilize. Now once we've got our machines, this is a great monitoring solution, but obviously remote control, remote access technology is first and foremost about the ability to jump on a remote machine and provide support, assistance, or access resources that are important to you on that remote machine. So with that in mind, the next step within NetSpot Manager is for us to select a PC and actually perform our one-to-one -one remote control. So let's select a couple of devices and do a one-to-one -one remote control. There's a PC here, we can right-click and simply select View. And as you can see, we've jumped straight to their screen. So we can, for example, set our color depth information here um, down to 256 if we're working over a mobile connection and we don't need quite the same level of exact color recognition being sent through. We can change our view modes here to either be share where both parties have access to the mouse and keyboard, watch mode where we're utilizing the tool simply as a remote monitoring solution, 
or control mode where we are actually hands-on with a remote device and we're preventing the remote user interacting at the same time. Perfect if we're working on maintenance tasks on a server, for example, and we don't some want somebody to walk up to the computer and make any other changes. We can change to our full screen mode that allows us to display one-to-one. -one. And as you probably noticed at this point here, we're running in scale to fit mode, which basically means that we can adjust the size of this view window at any time and everything is proportionally adjusted to suit. Staple of a remote management product is the ability to capture and timestamp a screenshot to keep a record of any activities that have been undertaken. We have our ability to capture a remote hardware and software inventory, which we'll cover in due course, perform a file transfer, chat, launch applications, and the launch application feature can be extremely powerful within NetSport Manager as it means we can connect to multiple devices and remotely initiate a setup file or a service or an update without having to visit each PC and run the command locally for each machine. Our clipboard, as it suggests, simply allows us to select text or details on one machine, copy it to our clipboard and then access that clipboard and paste back locally to our PC or of course the complete opposite. Our audio allows us to have two-way communication with the remote user whilst performing remote control, turn the audio off, talk only, listen only, or of course adjust our settings to suit our own requirements. In terms of remote management, we have a quick logout option, quick reboot, blank the screen if we're performing something on our remote control that is particularly uh, sensitive or confidential, the ability to annotate our screen, which allows us to highlight areas of the screen of particular interest to draw the user's attention, and we have the ability to toggle between different modes of remote control, from intercepting the video calls to simply scraping the screen information that's presented in front of us. So lots of different features, all built around the idea of providing the most powerful, um, high-performance but secure remote control available on the market. Now let's jump, and we'll jump across to another PC here, and we'll view this PC as well. In the case of this PC, we've got a nice, big, high-resolution device we're going to just scale down a little bit so we can see it and as you can see in the case of this computer here we're remote controlling a Windows 8.1 device um, and as we said we have our scale to fit options our screenshot options and much more and we're able to monitor exactly in real time any activity that the user is performing good now in addition to those features we talked about some of the supporting features and we can access a high level the top features below each computer or by right-clicking and accessing our menu here. Or finally, we have key features grouped together. So let's work our way through some of the selected items. Under Actions, we select a PC first of all, and then select Actions. You'll see we have the ability to access a remote command prompt. Simply click, and here's our remote command prompt, and we're now in a situation where we can remotely work on a PC as if we were sat in front of it. And again, this allows us to avoid the need for having a, an actual remote control session to a local command prompt on the remote PC. This is a quick and easy way for system managers to access or find out key information. Again, from our actions menu, we also have a registry option. And if we open the registry, as you can see, we have access to all of the key, H key, current user, software, and so on. All of the key registry information that might be needed for remote diagnostic and management of computers. Again, back to our actions menu, and we have our inventory feature. And you'll see for our inventory information, it's broken down as you'd expect into a number of key areas. Our starting point is to provide us with an overview of the system, showing us our operating system, service pack, physical memory, what domain we're a member of, and so on and so on. We then have subsections which allow us to give detailed information about the motherboard, the network adapter, CPU, the video adapter, storage for current device, any additional supported storage devices, as well as any multimedia, miscellaneous, additional printers, and so on and so on. Now, as well as the hardware information, we're also able to produce a summary of all the software that is installed on the remote machine, including the current version number, which again allows us to actually analyze and provide remote support information. We're also able to provide and view a full list of all hotfixes that have been installed on the remote computer, 
with quick links to the Microsoft reference points so we can see what has and hasn't been installed on the PC and of course that's always a good starting point for problem resolution. We can also see what's running on a PC at any time whether it be applications and so on and we can select those and we can remotely close them as well it allows us to see what's happening in background. We can also see what processes are running on the computer and again for each process we can select and if appropriate we can export a summary of that or kill that process and finally we have a full analysis of all services that are on the PC and I'm just expanding these to make them slightly more visual to you but again we can select particular services and security permitting we have the ability to interact stop pause restart any of those particular services so all of these elements grouped together to provide us with a very quick and effective way of remotely managing and discovering the key information about a remote PC. In version 12 and onwards, this hardware inventory functionality has also been included within the companion mobile apps for both iOS and Android smartphones and tablet computers as well. So let's close that one down. Let's go back to our list of actions and you'll see we have the ability to chat with a computer. Chat is fairly straightforward. We can specify a topic, test topic, we can choose whether members can decline to join, whether they can leave the chat and so on. We can obviously select multiple members to join the topic and then if so, we simply start a chat session that allows us to talk to our remote user and our user can respond accordingly. We can invite other members and if required we can even create a small virtual whiteboard to share and explain certain topics. Moving on, we also have the ability to send a message. Well, of course. Chat is quite effective when we're talking with one or a small group of people, but message is a quick and simple way for us to alert all users within a department or across the entire enterprise if there are particular topics we need to draw their attention to. So perhaps from a tech support point of view, we want to send a message to all staff, making them aware we know the mail server is down, don't call us, we're currently dealing with the matter, and send message simply allows us to send to all available net support clients across the network, all connected clients, or just those that we've currently selected. And we can send a message which is either on screen until acknowledged, or we can add a time value before the message is automatically closed. Again, a handy supporting tool. And below that, we have our launch applications, which as we discussed when we looked at the one-to-one -one remote control, simply allows us to actually remotely launch an application, either an executable or from a save list to any number of computers, and also highlight and view the results to make sure that that's actually being applied to each computer. Okay, following on from our actions menu, we have the desktop menu, and the starting point is our remote control option, the ability to view a client, which we've already seen. Below that, we have a show feature, and the show feature is the reverse of remote control, simply that we can select our computer screen, and we can show it to any number of remote client PCs. So in this case, to all the members that we're currently connected to, and we're able to show them, create a replay file, so in fact create a video recording of our presentation, set any hotkeys, enable audio support, and automatically we now have within NetSupport a presentation tool that allows us to deliver effective real-time training to staff within our enterprise. We also have a scan mode which allows us to select a small number of computers and view those at a different interval so we can cycle through our remote control process looking at a particular number of computers for 10 seconds, 20 seconds or whatever. Of course we have the luxury within NetSupport of our wonderful monitor mode which allows us to see all our thumbnails but if we need to see much larger thumbnails but all computers in turn then SCAN provides a useful supporting tool. We have our record and playback and one of the key features within NetSupport to support our effective remote control is the ability that we can actually record each remote control session, save that away to a file, edit that file, and then subsequently use it for playback either directly by the end user from their PC or from a technician's point of view, we can build up a library of key topics and solutions and then use that playback file to deliver effective training to our end users. Again, all these features are included as standard within NetSupport Manager. Our Manage menu simply gives us quick access to our key management features, namely the ability to reboot, 
a selected computer, log in or log out of one or a number of selected computers remotely, send control delete for quick access to remote logins or um, task manager, for example, as well as perhaps the most important ones, the ability to remotely power on and power off remote computers. A really handy feature and again extends the capabilities of NetSupport significantly. Next up we have our file transfer menu and you'll see we've got three different types of file transfer. Not intended to be too confusing but let's work through them one by one. So first and foremost is file transfer, the kind of functionality we'd expect to see in most reasonable remote control solutions. So we have our desktop computer and we have our remote computer and as you'd expect we have a hierarchy for each one and the ability to select files and simply select an item. Once we see an item that we want we can select it, copy it, we've got some pictures here and we can move and copy as you'd expect, right click, edit, rename, delete and so on. Very much the foundation of file transfer as you would expect in any product. What we can also do within NetSupport is utilize file distribution. So let's actually select a few computers here in our group. And now when we do file distribution, you'll see that we're actually able to do the same thing, but now we've got a selection of computers at the bottom of the screen, like so. So with file distribution, I'm able to select a folder, and I'm able to either drag and drop that directly to those remote computers. But before we do that, we'll say no, we want to be able to set the destination on the remote location. So here we can actually use our set destination folder and we can choose, for example, to send those th that information straight to the documents folder on the remote PC. Once we do that, we can lock that in place and now we can drag and drop our folder to each remote computer. So file distribution provides us with a very flexible tool for delivering system updates or documents to multiple users across the enterprise in a single action. If you consider file distribution and at the same time consider the ability within NetSupport Manager to remotely launch an application, you will see that the two elements together provide a technician with a very powerful remote update tool as well. Finally, we have our file manager option, which is simply a local file management and browsing tool. We provide it within NetSupport Manager simply to ensure that if a technician is working within the product, they don't need to leave it to access local file resources. Along the rest of this menu we have our quick access to our view client, inventory, show features as well as some properties and settings that we'll come on to and all the information within this toolbar can be customized. You'll see here there are a range of additional features individually that we can select and we can drag across from here to the right machine. Announce for example being an audible version of sending a message our quick view menu here we've used already by selecting a PC and having access to our summary information is telling us about the different operating systems, this being a Windows 8.1 machine. We can toggle this to actually tell us the type of PC, so it's an all-in-one form factor versus these being desktops, and we can also change the location. These computers currently are all located in the United Kingdom. Again, a very simple way of quickly getting an update on what's available on our machines. We can also overlay for our mobile devices with battery and wireless details as well. So we have all of our computers across the enterprise and as you can see we can remotely connect to them, we can monitor one or multiple systems, we can show our screen to them for interactive training, we can record remote control sessions, we can interact both textually and with an audio stream over our remote control sessions, we can capture inventory information, we can remotely monitor services, processes, the registry, command prompt of remote machines, all of the tools that are required to ensure that we can deliver effective remote management via any technology solution. The key, of course, is always going to come back to our ability to remotely locate and discover those computers. And we start our presentation off by utilizing the browse feature, where we're able to browse the network and discover all computers across our local network. We also have our connect option at the top here, which we're going to open, and you'll see we've got a range of connectivity tools. The first being the ability to quick connect to a machine based on its name or address. And you'll see we've got three toggles here. By default, we can quickly connect to a machine based on its IP address, or we can connect based on the actual 
logged on user for remote PC we wish to connect, or we could toggle and connect by the PC name, PC123. So we have three different mechanisms for quickly connecting to a machine where we know their details. Also included within Netsport Manager is our new Pin Connect feature. Now typically when we're browsing and discovering across the network we might find hundreds or thousands of computers and initially they'll be identified by their PC name. It's not always obvious which PC an end user is sat at and regrettably in some cases the end user is not clear themselves what the name of their PC is. So Pin Connect is a new feature designed to deliver face-to-face -face customer service and support by allowing both parties to enter a unique pin code and in doing so automatically handshake and connect with Netsport Manager. Now as you'd expect there's a central point the new pin server that is provided as a free component with Netsport Manager and runs alongside the Netsport gateway component. This pin server simply ensures that only unique pin codes are generated and stores against that pin code for its lifespan, typically a few minutes, the details of one or other party so that when the pin code is entered by the end user it will automatically connect back to the operator who generated the pin code. To add additional flexibility pin codes can be requested and entered at either end of the connection so end users can also generate a pin code pick up the phone, ring the tech support department and ask them to punch in a code in order to quickly jump onto their desktop and provide them with assistance or take a look at a problem that they're currently having. Now within our connect menu, enter a pin and create a pin are provided there. You'll also see on our main toolbar we have a pin connect feature where we can either click on create pin and the server will display for us a code 12345 which we can then either telephone and speak to our end user, email, or we can automatically copy and paste into a messenger, or we can enter a pin if we've been given one, and when we select the enter pin, we're given our simple box to enter our pin code, and when we click connect, that will handshake and automatically connect us to the client PC that also is carrying the corresponding pin code. So the pin connect feature allows both ends of Netsport to be very, very effective in joining and very much more user-friendly than perhaps we've seen in previous versions where the, the remote client component was hidden away. I think it's important to highlight at this point that most people's perception of remote control tends to fall into two camps. Either the remote management tools that are pre-installed like Netsport Manager that historically have been largely invisible to the end user and the browser-based customer um, focused remote control products where the end user has to initiate the activity. With the latest version of Netsport Manager, we provide both methods, both interfaces, to ensure that we can either provide our solution silently and seamlessly to unmanned computers across the enterprise, but also provide a clear and concise interface and communication to desktop users when they're using their PCs to also facilitate effective remote support and assistance. So we've looked at most of the main user-based features within Netsport Manager. We've had a look at our real-time thumbnails and our ability to change the information that's displayed on the screen, highlight individual computers, show their regional information with flag overlays, identify the operating system, even the enclosure type, whether they're a virtual PC or a rack mounted system in real time, toggle our recent history so we can see what kinds of computers we're dealing with, access via vPro or by direct from help requests, management of remote computers and much more. The next bit really is to have a quick overview on some of the configuration options that are available within the control and then we can jump to the client side, the end user side machine to talk about some of the settings and options that are available for your user base. So under our network option we can configure our networking and the first level is very much a case of identifying who my control is. So in this case we've got a name against it and we can add some descriptions and user ID information to make it more meaningful on our main control interface. We then have our connectivity options. So by default, we have our TCP connectivity. And you can see here that we've got what port we're communicating on, what subnets we want to browse for. And you can see here we can add in a range of subnets across the network so we can ensure we can browse and discover all computers. We can also enable broadcast, allowing us to send when we're performing a show to computers or our one-to-many file distribution. We can broadcast over UDP to minimize the network traffic and maximize the performance that we send out. 
We also have support for a range of legacy platforms, our IPX and NetBIOS. We have HTTP support when we're communicating over an internet gateway. The details for our new PIN server, so we can specify the address of the PIN server and whether it's going to simply be a, the same details as our gateway machine. Again, we have legacy support for dial-up support as well as advanced networking defaults, which typically you shouldn't need to use. And we have some first-level security settings. Will we set a password on our control before it can be used? I'll be operating a security key with our deployment. The security key ensures that only our version of the NetSport Manager software will connect to the same matching version of all our users by means of them all carrying a unique security key. This prevents other staff downloading an eval copy and having any connectivity. We can prompt for additional information before we connect. So when you try and connect to my PC, tell me a bit more about you first. We can ensure that we use compression and equally we can also enable different levels of encryption to further secure our connectivity. And on startup, we can also set some default activities. When I start my PC, connect to all computers within a defined group, browse for certain machines, start viewing and much more. Those are really those initial, what are my scope of behavior and what kind of environment am I dealing with? We have a settings option within NetSport Manager that gives us a bit more granularity. So now, as well as our connectivity options, we also have our security settings, but we now extend more detail so we can have our event logging, so we have a record of all activity that occurred when we performed our remote control, whether we're going to record automatically replay files each and every time we connect to a PC and store those, including audio, in a certain location, whether we're going to act as an administrator when we connect to remote machines, we have lots of configuration options for our remote control sessions. Are we going to go full screen? Are we going to scrape the screen rather than intercept the video? Are we going to blank the screen when we connect to it by default? What kind of cache size? What keyboard we're going to use? What fonting information? As you can see here, we can map to all different language keyboards if we're remotely supporting a Dutch or Japanese computer from afar. Whether we want to capture the printer information, so when we're remote controlling a PC in another office, we can hit print on that PC, capture the print output, and redirect it back to our local computer. Our audio settings, as well as all sorts of configuration options within the control interface to hide or display certain information to suit. And in addition, we can also restrict certain functionality that's available. And the important aspect of this is that our control can be profiled. In other words, when we jump into the control, it will prompt us for a password. And depending on who we are and the password we enter, different functionality can be presented to us. Now as you'd expect, NetSport works both ways. We can control the functionality that's available based on the control, but we can also authenticate based on the end user PC. So depending on which PC you connect to, it will only allow certain features to be available to different technicians. Again, it's another way of ensuring that senior staff's computers can only be accessed by senior IT technicians, or perhaps more appropriately, that only you can access your office PC remotely rather than other staff. Again, we have our help requests and what to do when somebody requests help. Highlight it in our menu, play a message, a sound, and so on. Our file transfer settings and what our compression priorities are when we're actually performing it. VPro, specifying our VPro settings and how we access those. Default file locations for our configuration files and this is where we store our list of known historical clients groups and so on that we've created and if you're using NetSport Protect our desktop security product we also have an integration configuration page here now I appreciate that's fairly whistle stop but the purpose of this presentation is to give you a flavor and an overview rather than take you through how to use each and every feature within the configuration Okay, so let's have a look at the product from the end user's perspective, or as we refer to it, the client component. In the system tray, the user has a NetSport Manager client icon, and when they click on the icon, they're presented in version 12 and later with our new user information screen. The NetSport Manager screen here tells the end user some key information about their own computer, their computer name, their details, their address, and what operating system they're running. It also shows them their license details. On the right, they can either create a PIN or enter a PIN using our new PIN Connect feature from version 12 and onwards, if required to by a technician. 
and they also have quick access to view their own local inventory, request help, or access previous replay files that have been recorded for support or assistance to them. Now they can have this display like so, they can pin it, minimize it, or even click on the icon here and have a minimized version that simply sits on their PC. And in many cases, simply knowing their current PC name and address information is sufficient information to ensure that they can communicate effectively with the tech department. If, however, somebody connects to their PC, you'll see that the status changes to green, and this allows them to see that they're now connected, who the connectee is, where they're from, and it gives them two key features, the ability to initiate a chat session with the person who's connected to their PC, or where appropriate and security is permitting, simply disconnect the remote control session if they felt it wasn't appropriate. Now, of course, within NetSport Manager, we have all sorts of client authentication features, user acknowledgement, validation, and so on, which we'll come on to now by having a look at the client configurator component. Okay, from the NetSport Manager program group, we've opened the client configurator, and you'll see you're presented with two options. Our basic config, which allows you to simply set things like the client name and the protocol that you're going to be communicating over, or the advanced option that presents all of the configuration information available to NetSupport. So for the purpose of this quick walkthrough, we'll jump to the Advanced tab, and you'll see that we have a single profile. Now the clue here is that we have one profile. Within the NetSupport Manager, we can have multiple profiles that are adjust and adapt the behavior of the client depending on who is connecting to it. So for example, if this was the PC of the Finance Director, they may have a profile that says all key features are disabled when connected to by most technical staff except one senior member of staff who can connect but only when the finance director is logged off from their machine and a user acknowledgement is flagged for example. Let's have a look at our master profile by selecting edit and we can go through some of the functionality that's available. Many of this we've already touched on from a control side but we'll quickly whiz through the key bits which are most relevant. So again we have a mirror from as we saw on the control side of our connectivity specifying whether we're dealing with TCP, HTTP, setting up the address of our PIN server, and so on. Security is always key. We have a user validation. I'm only going to allow machines to connect to this machine that have a certain username and password. I'm going to authenticate my username and passwords with NT, or I'm going to authenticate with Active Directory so that only members of certain AD groups, so for example, administrators, are able to connect. If I choose my NT options, I can also enable smart card authentication, ensuring that when I remotely connect to this machine, I will have to have a matching smart card with credentials passed through to facilitate my membership. Once I connect, my access privileges can be controlled, as you can see here, so I can ensure that file transfer or remote reboot or system management features are disabled when I'm connected to. User acknowledgement, a key feature for live remote control, when somebody tries to connect to this client PC, the user will be required to acknowledge the request. In other words, a box will pop up on the screen saying, user X wishes to connect to your PC, do you authorize? And they have a yes, no option. But of course, we need extra granularity. So when we enable that feature, we can override by saying we want user acknowledgement, except when there's nobody logged in on the PC, or except when connecting as the same logged on user as is on the PC at the moment, and whether we want to display some text to validate or, or explain the reason for my connection, and also a timeout. If I request the ability to connect to the PC and no one responds after 30 seconds, what should we do? Reject the connection or accept the connection? In addition, we've got some view acknowledgement. So view mode, as we know, has three states, watch, share, and control. So maybe we say, it's okay to watch my machine, but if you want to change that state to give you keyboard and mouse access, share or control modes, then again, I need to be prompted for feedback. We have smart card support, which is our additional layer of security for those organizations that utilize user um, validation via smart cards. We have controls over security keys that are used for our connectivity. We can even tie connectivity down to only from certain machines of a specific address. And also we can force encryption to be used at all times. What happens when we remotely disconnect from a PC? But well, we don't want to leave a machine and forget accidentally to log it out. So we can also set that when we disconnect, the machine is automatically locked, logged off, restarted, and more. 
we can obviously set a password to make sure these configuration settings aren't modified subsequently. We can specify some additional features in our file transfer. So one of the important areas here is we can actually control not only file transfer, but also restrict or limit access to certain areas of our directory structure, another really useful feature. Again, replay files we've touched on before, the ability to create a video recording of a remote control session, either for security or for training purposes. And again, we can choose whether these are going to be recorded by default, where they're going to be stored, and under what user context. Full event logging, we can enable either to an NT event log or to our own unique event log in one or multiple places. And again, this allows us to keep a full history of any connectivity to our machine. We can customize our remote control sessions in terms of our color depth by default, whether we're going to interact with our DVD and 3D support, our show mode, the reverse of remote control, when we send our show back to the user, are we going to show it to a window? Are we going to, as a user, say we don't want to receive shows anymore? Thank you. So again, lots of flexibility there, as well as configuring, again, our audio support. From a client side point of view, we can disable certain requests we don't want the client to have access to replay files, request chats, and so on. And we can also, of course, control how our client is presented. So by default, we encourage users to have our client interface that's visible to end users. But depending on the nature of your business, it can be completely hidden. It can be silent, or as we call it, quiet mode. So there's absolutely no indication to the end user that there's a client running. Or it can be the opposite, where they have to acknowledge and they receive an audible reminder when a remote control session is actually happening. We can specify lots of information to ensure we have effective help support. So not only can a user request help from their desktop PC, but they can also be sent to a link for information about their tech support department, or even given the details of individual control PCs where they can direct different types of help requests to. And finally, we can also set customizable text. So when somebody connects to you, we can add some key string information that displays on their screen, along with a variable of who the user is, different information when they're being viewed, and different customized information in the About box. We even within NetSupport have the ability to provide on our client information a customized logo so that you can brand the product to suit your own organization's look and feel. We also have our profile options within the product and finally, support for virtual devices and terminal services or thin client devices. Lots and lots of config options, all included within NetSupport Manager, to ensure that it can be perfectly adapted to suit any kind of technology environment. That wraps up our fairly fast-paced overview of the features and configuration options within NetSupport Manager. For further information, please visit netsupportmanager.com where you find lots of supporting resources as well as access to a free 30-day evaluation copy of the product. If you have any questions, then please contact your sales representative. And most importantly of all, thank you for your time today.